So why are odd numbers not even? Some people define that any number that isn't even is automatically odd. But we're going to start with a different definition and use that to prove that odd numbers are not even. So let's start out by talking about what is an even number. We're going to define that an even number is any number that can be written as 2 times n, where n is a whole number. So some examples are going to be 2 times 1, which is 2, 2 times 2, which is 4, 2 times 3 is 6, and so on. We could also go the other direction. 2 times 0 is going to be 0, which means 0 is an even number. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and we could also have negative 4, and so on in this direction. So what is an odd number then? We say a number is odd if it can be written as 2 times n plus 1 for some whole number n. So that's going to be all of these even numbers, but then plus 1. 0 plus 1 is 1, 2 plus 1 is 3, 4 plus 1 is 5, 6 plus 1 is 7, and so on. So we want to prove that odd numbers are not even. Let's suppose we have some odd number. Well, we know because it's odd, it can be written as 2 times n plus 1 for some whole number n. We want to show that this number is not even. Well, what would happen if it was even? Well, if this number is even, by definition, that means it can be written as 2 times some whole number. We'll call it m. So now we have this equation. Let's subtract 2n from both sides. Minus 2n, minus 2n over here. That's going to give us 1 equals 2m minus 2n. Now on the right side, we have a factor of 2 in both of these terms, so we can factor that out. That's going to give us 1 equals 2 times m minus n. Now what is this final equation saying? Well, m and n are whole numbers, which means that m minus n is also a whole number. This equation is saying that 1 equals 2 times a whole number. In other words, 1 is even. But if we look at our list of even numbers here, it looks like 1 is not going to show up in this list. We have 0 and 2, and 1 is between them, but 1 doesn't show up. And as we go out in either direction, away from 0, the numbers are going to get bigger. We have 2, 4, 6, 8. Each number is bigger than the last number. And if we go the other direction, minus 2, minus 4, minus 6, minus 8, the magnitude of those numbers is also getting bigger. So none of these numbers out here are going to equal 1. They're all too big. So if 0 is even and 2 is even but 1 is not even, that means this equation is not possible. This has to be false. We've reached a contradiction, and that means that our assumption must have been false. And the only thing we assumed is that this odd number we chose was also even. That means that has to be impossible. We can't have an odd number that's also even. And that completes the proof. So if anyone ever asks you why are odd numbers not even, you can tell them it's because 1 is not a multiple of 2. Now this might seem like kind of a silly thing to prove. I mean, of course everyone knows that the odd numbers aren't even. But this same proof technique comes up in important places too. And we're going to look at that next because we're going to prove that there are infinitely many prime numbers. In order to do that, let's start like we did here by assuming the opposite. Over here we assumed what would happen if an odd number was also even. So over here, we're going to assume what would happen if there were only finitely many prime numbers. So let's say we have a finite number of primes, and we can list them. So we have p1, p2, p3, all the way to pn. These are all of the prime numbers. If we have all the prime numbers here, we can multiply them together. So we get p1 times p2 times p3 all the way to times pn. What I'm going to do is take this product of prime numbers and add 1. So this is a new number, and it has to have some prime factors. 
but we know that this list right here, p1 to pn, that's the list of all prime numbers. So it's also the list of all possible prime factors. So the prime factors of this number have to be in this list, p1 to pn. It has to have one of these numbers as a prime factor. So let's suppose that this number has p1 as a prime factor. We could always switch the order later. If that's true, then we can write this number as p1 times some whole number k. Now let's subtract this product on both sides. We'll do minus p1, p2, dot, 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 pn on both sides. When we do that, on the left side, we're just going to get 1. And on the right side, we're going to get p1k minus p1, p2, dot, 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 pn. Now both of the terms on the right side have a factor of p1. So let's go ahead and factor that out. We get 1 equals p1 times k minus p2, dot, 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 pn. And notice the equation we have right here is very similar to the equation we have over here with the odd and even numbers proof. And we're going to use the same argument. 1 is not a multiple of p1 because all of the prime numbers are bigger than 1. So all of their multiples are also bigger than 1. And that means this equation is not possible. So we've reached a contradiction. Our assumption must have been false. And the only thing we assumed is that there are finitely many prime numbers, which means that assumption was not correct. And we conclude there are infinitely many prime numbers. And this is what I think is so cool about proofs. Using the same techniques in many different situations, we can get a ton of different results. We used the same technique to prove that there are infinitely many prime numbers as we did to prove that odd numbers are not even.